session we would be understanding what is circulation and how do we understand the various types of winds and their influence on the climate. Now if we understand the circulation I can say when we talk about movement of air we talk about the process of circulation. Now the movement of air in atmosphere is not a simple phenomena. If I say this is earth and you have equator and poles and you have the movement of air in very simple terms I can say the air can move in such a fashion but does this happen in reality it does not happen in reality what happens around around the globe is you have sections of low pressure and high pressure that are built up and wind moves from high pressure to low pressure the movement of the wind is known as wind gradient or the pressure gradient it moves along the pressure gradient so it is known as the pressure gradient force so movement from high pressure to low pressure is along a gradient and rather than whole of the atmosphere and the circulation of air taking place in a common fashion you have different patterns that occur on the globe and we will understand in this session how these different patterns of wind originate now as we talked about in the last class when we were talking about the stability concept we discussed that the concept of stable, unstable and neutral under that we saw that if you have a little impulse that is provided there would be little disturbance if there is more impulse that is provided the disturbance would be higher. Now when I say if there is a slow moving air what would happen? A slow moving air would definitely cause less disturbance less uh, less movement or less deflection I could say however a fast moving air would lead to higher deflection why does this take place you have a slow impulse that is provided and that would lead to lesser deflection however on the other hand you have faster impulse that is provided and that would lead to more impulse or more deflection similarly at the poles you would have higher deflection as compared to the equatorial region. Now to understand this we will have to primarily understand what is Coriolis effect. Now when I say Coriolis effect we talk about mass of a moving body in a rotating system. So you have mass of a moving body. So this is a rotating system say a merry-go-round video we have here. So under this video we will see you have a mass of a mass of a body that is a ball here and it is rotating on a merry-go-round. What would happen? The force would act perpendicular to the direction of motion and the axis of rotation. So the force would act, act perpendicular to the axis of rotation and the direction of the motion and that is how we understand the movement of this ball. So if I play this video you will see The ball rather than going straight it deflects its path and it deflects its path or it moves around it takes a curvature path rather than the intended normal path. So it rather than going straight to the next person it turns around and goes to the another person and this is how Coriolis effect takes place in reality. So in reality if I say on the globe this is an intended path. The wind rather than moving on the intended path would deflect and this would be the actual path of the wind movement. So that is where we apply the Coriolis force. Now if I speak broadly I can say due to Coriolis force objects deflect towards right in north hemisphere and towards left in south hemisphere. So if I say right in north hemisphere and towards left in south hemisphere what does that signify that signifies that if you uh, if you have a wind that is blowing from equator to poles that is this should be the actual direction of the wind but due to Coriolis force the deflection would take place towards the right similarly if you have a wind that's blowing from pole towards the equator it would be it's blowing down so the right would be on the other side so this would be deflection towards right. So in either cases whether it's moving from equator to poles or from poles to equator the deflection in north hemisphere would always be towards the right. 
Similarly, the deflection in south hemisphere would always be towards the left side. So that's the basic principle we need to know when we talk about the Coriolis force. So that's one major phenomena that plays an important role in understanding the wind circulations. Now next is, you have two diagrams here where we have tried to explain the concept of forces that apply and how wind movement takes place. So you have the eye of the cyclone, uh, eye of the wind, that's the low pressure area and you have the high pressure area. Now we know that winds blow from high pressure to low pressure. So you have the wind blowing from the peripheral high pressure to the central low pressure and the force which is applied from high pressure to low pressure is known as the PGF or the pressure gradient force. Now this pressure gradient force act in the inverse direction or the reverse direction of the centrifugal force which tries to bring the object outside and opposite to the Coriolis force. So you have the Coriolis force and the centrifugal force which take place in a similar direction. Perpendicular to this you have the frictional force and opposite to the frictional force you would have the direction of the gradient wind. So this is how we understand the movement of air. So from high pressure to low pressure you have Coriolis force balancing sorry the pressure gradient force balancing the pressure gradient force you would have the centrifugal and the Coriolis force and perpendicular to this or the resultant of these two would be the real wind that would blow and this is known as the geostrophic wind. Now once we are clear with this the deflections in the wind pattern we can understand the global wind movement patterns. Now this global wind movement patterns are known as the planetary winds or the permanent winds. When we talk about planetary or the permanent winds, we have some important things to consider here. First you have the doldrum area that's the 5 degree north and south of the equator. Uh, it is lying on the line of the ITCZ that is the intertropical inter continental, uh, inter continental uh, convergence zone. So you have the intertropical convergence zone that is found here and this varies over the uh, region. It's uh, kind of minutely deflects from 5 degree north and south and this is the region of low pressure. Now what is happening to the wind? This is the region of low pressure and balancing this you have the region of high pressure on both the sides. So wind will blow from high pressure to low pressure in the upper atmosphere. So you have winds that blow from high pressure to low pressure. Now as we understood because of the Coriolis force in the south hemisphere they deflect towards left and in the north hemisphere they deflect towards right. So you have both the winds that go in this fashion and these are known as trade winds. When we talk about upper atmosphere, you have this is the sinking air and this is the rising air. So you have a kind of cell formation or a air circulation that occurs in the atmosphere. The air circulation in this zone is known as headless cell. The air circulation in the zone of trade winds is known as headless cell. Uh, and European sailors mainly used this air pattern circulations to understand the trading regions and the regions in which they need to go for, uh, for the purpose of trading. So that is important. Now in North Hemisphere since now all the names of the winds that we would be understanding today would originate based on the region of origination not the destination. So it is originating from North and East so it is Northeast trade winds. It is originating from North and again East. So it is south, sorry, south and east. So it is southeast trade winds. So in the southern hemisphere you have southeast trade winds and in the northern hemisphere you have northeast trade winds. So that's the first thing. The next is this zone is a zone of high pressure that's around 30 degrees. Then you have the subtropical region, subpolar region which has a zone of low pressure. So again winds will move from high pressure to subpolar low pressure regions. So what would happen here would again be the similar phenomena. You would have the air that is moving from high pressure to low pressure. As we understood by Coriolis force it would deflect towards right. So you would have movement towards right in the north hemisphere and in the south hemisphere 
it would be towards the left. So if I'm moving down, this would be my left. So this would be the deflection towards left. So you have the wind patterns that originate here. Now similar to the Hadley cell formation that takes place in the trade wind zones, you have the Ferrell cell formation that takes place in the westerly zone. Now westerlies, uh, these winds which blow in this region similar, as they are known as trade winds in 0 to 30, between 30 to 60 they are known as westerlies. Now these westerlies have different names. At around 40 degree latitude they are known as roaring 40s. At 50 degrees they are known as furious 50s and at 60 degrees they are known as screaming 60s. So all this now to understand based as I say if I want to name these winds I would name them based on the origin not the destination again. So based on the origin it is towards the east originating from the south. So this is southeastern westerly and you have the northwestern West, uh, westerlies here. So you have the southwestern, southwesterlies and the sorry uh, originating from the south moving to, uh, from the west moving towards the east. So you have southwesterlies and the northwesterlies that blow in this region. Since they are westerlies they are known as westerlies. So they are known as southwesterlies and north hemisphere. Remember in north hemisphere it is known as southwesterlies, not the south hemisphere and in south hemisphere it is known as northwesterlies. Now in the north you have an ample, this region between 30 to 60 degrees has an ample of land mass. In contrast to this, the southern region between 30 to 60 has ample of water body. So that is a basic contrasting uh, difference between the westerlies that blow in the north hemisphere and the south hemisphere. Since South Hemisphere is a huge land mass, uh, is a huge mass of water body, you have much more strong winds with uh, retained directions in these. And now lastly you have the high pressure polar regions where the wind blow towards the low pressure region and once the wind blow from high pressure to low pressure, you have the wind directions that could be seen here. So these are known as polar easterlies and polar easterlies are part of polar cells. So finally you have the headless cell, peril cell and finally the final cell is known as the polar cell. So these are part of the polar cells. Again in the north pole they are originating from the north eastern side moving towards the western side. So they are known as northeast polar winds and in the south they are originating from south and eastern side moving towards the western side so they are known as southeastern polar winds. So these are the various planetary winds we also call them permanent winds. So these are the major winds that we need to understand. Now moving on to the next section that is the local winds. Local winds are dominant over a specific region. So you have a specific area where you will find a specific local wind which is not present on other parts of the region. Now local winds can be either hot or cold in nature. They can occur during daytime, they can occur during nighttime. Now what is the basic cause for local winds to originate? The first cause that we can note is the convective heating patterns, the day cooling and uh, the day and night differences in the cooling. Then you have the unequal heating of the surface. Next is the unequal heating of the surface. The third is the concept of gravity or the downdraft. So these are the basic causes. Now next is the characteristics. What are the basic characteristics of the uh, local winds? When I say characteristics of local wind, I can say since they are local, they are dominant over a small area, that's the first thing. The next thing, they can be felt on the ground, uh, they are influenced by the local conditions or the local atmospheric uh, phenomena that is taking place and since they are very local, their speed and time will vary frequently. So you would have huge changes in the speed and the time. Now there can be various types of local wind, one of those we would be talking is the land breeze and the sea breeze. Now what happens when we say sea breeze, during the daytime, what happens is the land parcel heats very quickly, 
Since the land parcel heats very quickly, what would happen? There would be a region of low pressure. So, since it is heating, the warm air would move up. So, you would have warm air moving up. And since warm air would move up, there would be a region of low pressure on the land. So, what would happen is to compensate that, you would have movement of air from uh, ocean which is at high pressure. So, movement of air, cool air will take place from ocean towards the land. And this process is what is known as sea breeze. And this predominantly occurs during the day. What happens during the night is reverse of this. During the night, you have the ocean that cools, uh, that gets heated, uh, that was unable to cool at a rate at which the land cools. As a result, what happens is ocean becomes warmer as compared to land and air from ocean rises high. Since the air from ocean rises high, there is a zone of low pressure that is created over the ocean area and wind moves from high pressure to low pressure as we study. So, wind will move from land to ocean and then you would have a land breeze circulation that would take place. So, that is one of its kind. The next is we can say valley breeze or mountain breeze. Now, valley breeze is also known as anabatic wind. And mountain breeze is also known as catabatic wind. So, we also call it anabatic catabatic wind systems. During the daytime, what happens is the lower regions get warmer. Since the lower valley regions get warmer, the warm air ascends up, and you have a region of low pressure that is created towards the uh, base of the uh, towards the valley region. And you have the warm air that ascends up. That happens during the daytime and we call it anabatic wind system. We also call it the upslope wind. The next is the catabatic wind system. That is the mountain wind system that happens during the night time mainly, mainly pulled by the action of gravity. You have the downward slope and these winds, uh, the mountain breeze are also known, uh, can be categorized into two. They are foen and fall. That is foen and fall. Now these two again depend, so fa fa fall is a large scale wind that occurs over large region. However, foen is due to mixing of the catabatic wind as one moves down, down slope. So these are the various kinds of wind that we would discuss, the details on foen fall and the various terminologies, uh, various names of the local winds are given in our postal course and also below this video, you can refer those for further discussions. Now, here are some of the major local winds that are prominent into the uh, globe. If you look at these, they are known by different names in different regions. Some of these are cold local winds, some of these are hot local winds. Now, if I try to zoom this out, I can say in the North America, you have the winds that blow in the rocky system are Chinook and Northeastern. Towards the Florida coast, you have Norte and towards the Alpatians, you have Blizzard. Similarly, if I go to Africa, you have Habub, which is a non-directional uh, wind. Then you have Harmattan that blows towards the Atlantic Ocean. You have Sirocco and Kamsin towards the Mediterranean Sea. And finally, Berg in the region of South Africa. So these are some of the local winds. As I said, you would find the complete list below this video. Uh, you can refer those and you need to memorize those for uh, the session. However, if there is any question asked on the wind system, what is important to explain is the difference between the planetary or the permanent wind system and the local wind systems. The origin, the process of origin of the permanent or the planetary wind system which involves the important role of Coriolis force and the pressure gradient force that is MERS and you must and must explain that before you proceed with the concept of Hadley cell and Ferrell cell. With this we cover the session on winds and circulation we will be covering more topics related to uh, climatology in the further sessions. You can subscribe to our channel for any further updates. Have a good day ahead.